Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to look at variables. I've had some questions about dependent versus independent variables. I wanted to make this lesson for my students and anyone else who it might help. So we're going to talk about dependent variables first. Dependent variables are kind of like the follow the crowd kind of variables. They change when other things change. They follow. They, um, they're not really very independent. They, they completely depend on what happens to other variables. And an independent variable, this is like the trendsetter variable. This is the variable that changes as it likes or changes independently of the other one and forces the dependent variable to follow suit. So hopefully some examples will help um, to, to illustrate this. First off, I need to tell what we need to have to be able to have some dependent and independent variables. First off, you, your equation needs to have at least two variables. We're going to focus on two variable equations or equations with two variables and one variable must be impacting the other. We'll talk about what happens when they don't, but in, to have a dependent and an independent variable, they have to impact each other. Also, having a word problem actually usually helps. Um, and I'm going to show how that works. So really, it does. We'll, we'll see how that works out. So I made up some ridiculous situations just to help illustrate my point. While searching for golf balls, I can find 10 for each hour that I search. Maybe I live next to a golf course. My equation is g equals 10h, where g is the number of golf balls, h is the number of hours that I spend searching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and identify the dependent variable and the independent variable. Remember, one impacts the other. So it might be hard to, to just say, well, well, first off, let's say what our variables are. They're g and h, right? So which one impacts the other one? Does the number of golf balls impact the number of hours I spend searching? Or does the number of hours I spend searching impact the number of golf balls I find? Well, when I say it that way, it makes a little bit more sense. So oftentimes, I actually like to write it out. So here it is in a sentence. The number of golf balls I find depends on how many hours I spend looking. So the number of hours I spend looking can change, and that will automatically change how many golf balls I find. All right? If I wrote it the other way around, it would, look, it would sound kind of ridiculous. The number of hours I, the number of hours I look depends on how many golf balls I find. No, the number of golf balls you find does not impact how many hours you spend looking. It's the opposite. So if that helps, um, when we write it out like this, the number of hours or the number of golf balls I find, that depends on how many hours I spend searching. And that helps us, how many hours? know that how many hours I look is independent and the number of golf balls I find depends on that number or is dependent. Let's look at another question. This is one of those math questions where you see many examples that helps you to understand. Here we go. Each minute I spend studying improves my grade. So minute m grade g. What's the dependent variable? Which one changes because the other one changes? And which one is independent? Which one can change however it wants to, and it forces the other one to either increase or decrease? Well, this one here might be a little bit more obvious. The number of minutes you spend studying is independent. That you can decide, I'm going to spend this many minutes, I'm going to spend this many minutes. That, that forces your grade to improve. Right, so your independent variable is your minutes studying. The dependent variable is your grade. When you choose to increase your study time, independent, your dependent, the grade, will improve in this scenario. Again, writing it out helps to, to kind of clarify my grade depends on how much I study. That makes sense. How much I study depends on my grade? That doesn't really make as much sense. Again, a little bit of logic reasoning works within this of discovering the um, dependent and independent variable. 
Now, I, I want to show a couple other examples. My pay depends on my sales. Let's say you, you work in marketing or sales. My weight depends on my exercise. If my exercise increases, hopefully my weight will decrease. Um, the amount depends on time. The distance depends on speed. All right, these are just some examples. They're, they're kind of vague examples, but just examples that help you see one thing depends on the other. When these ones change, it forces these other ones to either increase or decrease. Um, another way of looking at this is input versus output. For functions and other types of equations, you sometimes have an input, often, usually, most of the time, is your x value, and your output is your y value. Again, for functions, this definitely works. Um, for other equations, it sometimes works. You have an input and then a necessary output. You change your input, and it impacts your output. All right, your input is independent. The output is the dependent variable. I'll show you some examples. Here's one example that's very common, especially when you're first learning about graphs, and that's a table of values. You've got your input values, x equals 1, 2, 3, 4. There it is. I've just told you x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, so I put those in. When I change my input value, it is going to force my y value to change. Here we go. x equals 1. 1 plus 2. Well, when x equals 1, it's 1 plus 2. And so y is equal to 3. All right, sounds good. Um, when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2 plus 2. So y would be equal to 4. When x is equal to 3, see I'm going on that one. When x is equal to 3, y is equal to 3 plus 2. Y is equal to 5. All right, so again, you're just inputting data into a table here, but um, when, y, when x is equal to 4, y is equal to 6. So you can see that as the input changes, as x changes from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, my input value changes, it forces my output to be different every time. My input value is independent variable. My output value is the dependent variable. And that's how that works. All right, now, there are three ways that the, the input and output can relate to each other. We're going to talk about that very, very briefly. Um, they can have a positive correlation. When one increases, the other increases. Like the time spent um, putting money away and the amount of money that you have saved. When one increases, the other is forced to increase. Your independent variable is the time that you spend putting away the money. And the dependent, or the one that's forced to change, would be how much you have saved. All right? These are positive correlation. When one increases, the other one is forced to increase. This is what it looks like on a graph. Um, if it, it's a line graph, you just see it with the trend moving upwards when you move from left to right. If it's a scatter plot, again, the line would be moving generally in an upward pattern. That's a positive correlation. A negative correlation is when one increases, the other decreases, or when one decreases, the other increases. It goes back and forth. The example of my, when my exercise increases, hopefully my weight decreases. That's one example. The longer I wait, the less my car is worth. That's another one that has a negative correlation. On a graph, it's going to look opposite of what we just talked about. Linear graph is going to be trending downward from left to right. And a scatter plot, again, has that same. If you were to put a line of best fit in here, it would have a negative slope or negative correlation. And then there's the third kind where there's no correlation at all. Um, in some equations, the variables don't impact each other. You can't say one is dependent, one is independent. One is the input, one is the output. They just don't impact each other. All right? You can be trying to calculate what you sold um, at a store, and I sold three diapers and 15 bicycle tires. You know what I mean? Like they have no relationship to one another. You can say D is for diaper and B is for bicycle tires. 
and this is what I sold. I sold three times the amount of diapers and be, you know, they don't correlate. It, unless there's some kind of crazy cosmos going on, the number of diapers you sell is not going to impact the number of bicycle tires you sell. I picked two completely unrelated things to try and emphasize this point. Sometimes they don't correlate. And in a graph, it would look kind of like this, like a straight line, flat line, I shouldn't say straight line, a horizontal, no slope line like that has no real correlation. One isn't increasing while the other decreases. A scatter plot can just be all over the place. Today my diapers were three, tomorrow my diapers are 15, the next day my diaper sales could be, you know, all over the place. Um, and your bicycle tires are not going to be impacted by your diaper sales. All right, and that is a, in a situation where there's no correlation. You will have situations like that. They're not very common, but just to be aware of that. So quick recap, your dependent variable changes according to what happens to the independent variable. This is the follower in your group. This is the output in your group. Your independent variable changes as it likes. It can change very randomly. It can change however it wants. This is the trendsetter. When it changes, it forces the other one to follow suit. That's how this works. Independent variable is your input. Dependent variable is your output. Hope that that lesson helped to clarify dependent versus independent variables using those examples. And have a wonderful day.